I spent hours of my life making a donut in JavaScript last time, and you guys seem to want me to spend even more time doing it in Python. Do you really think I would waste time doing something that's basically impossible? Yeah, I, I probably would. First, let's talk about why this is hard. Python adheres the offside rule, which basically means that it is an indentation-based language. The interpreter heavily relies on the indentation and line breaks for the syntax itself, and if you didn't notice, making code look like a donut means that we are using quite a bit of indents and line breaks. Now this looks aesthetically pleasing for donut addicts like me, but it looks like a big mess syntax-wise, and unfortunately, the code's gotta run. Thus, as people are generally rational and don't spend hours attempting to thwart the Python interpreter with a donut, there was literally no one who has done it on GitHub so I could copy, I mean, use to inspire me. And to be frankly honest, I personally never planned to do this thing either, because I simply thought it couldn't be done. At least until I saw this outrageous Reddit post about Donut.c called, and I quote, Take this, Python. You never can create donut-shaped code which creates a 3D-shaped rotating donut. This is C code. This post provoked me so much I decided to give this project another shot. Well, actually, specifically, a comment underneath the post. I don't really care if people throw dirt on Python anyway. The comment mentioned a Python BrainF interpreter that is a lambda in the shape of a lambda. If this was real, my donut was completely feasible. With great hope, I clicked on the link. Well, this is awkward. Fortunately, the guy put the code on GitHub, and it was quite a masterpiece. I stared at it while thinking about it. First, I wondered why someone would spend their life making a big lambda. Then I wondered why someone would spend their life making code look like something at all. Then I realized that I was that someone. Anyway, I noticed that Python allowed for indentation and line breaks as it was parsing parenthetical expressions. This was only part of the story though, because I still needed to make sure that no other statement was going to require an indent, as I couldn't afford a single indent ruining my donut. This meant that I needed some one-liner Python code for the project. Another slight caveat was the fact that the code had to have its first line start all the way at the left with no indent, but I suppose a donut with a line at the top is better than no donut at all. To get started, I turned once again to trusty GitHub for a single line donut.c in Python and was blessed with this monstrosity of a one-liner by Julius. Perfect for what I needed. Then I need a template for my donut. I started with the same template I had for my JavaScript code. I was subconsciously aware that it was a bit too small, but I wanted a proof of concept first. Next, I had to start filling in the template with the actual Python code. I quickly realized that it was extremely difficult if I wanted to cut off each line in a perfectly valid parenthetical expression without modifying the original code. And I didn't really want to touch a one-liner that looks like it was going to implode at any moment. Fortunately, I realized that by simply wrapping certain tokens like numbers or expressions in useless parentheses, I was able to make it much easier on myself. As I was wrapping up my first donut after a decent chunk of time went by, the inevitable happened and my template was indeed too small. I tried to bump up the size of the template, but this stupidly took way longer than it should have because all of the code I had left for the donut template was decently minified and I was too lazy to find some other code. After finally figuring out how to bump the size up, I told myself that all I needed to do was make it a lot larger and that everything would fit perfectly. I once again started to grind away at the donut with my new template, and much to my surprise, but in hindsight not really, the template was way too large. I told myself that it was another great proof of concept, and then I finally decided to measure things out. First, I looked at the amount of characters in the code and tested a few donut diameter sizes to get the character count to be just right. I decided that around 50 characters more on the template for buffer would be fine, as I could just fill in the bottom with comments as I did before. I once again started to process, and believe it or not, I made another mistake. You see, the template generates a donut floating in a large void of indents, and for my last donut, that was not a big problem because I could just delete the indents in front of each line at the end. With the Python version, the first line has to reach significantly longer than the rest, and removing the indents on the bottom rows was going to offset the first row, and thus rendering the whole donut useless again. At least that's what I realized halfway through doing the thing. So after I contemplated defenestrating my computer, I fixed the template and went at it one last time. There's something that just hits different with a Python rendition of this donut code. I mean, a 3D spinning ASCII donut powered by donut-shaped code is something special in a C-based language itself. But just seeing the code in an indent-based language makes me so happy on the inside. It's not because I spent hours on this, or, you know, it's actually probably partially because I spent hours on this, but the thought of, as I put it before, thwarting the Python interpreter with a donut is pretty awesome. 
And with all that, I present to you Donut.py, world's first Donut.c clone in Python that looks like a donut. Huge thank you again to Andy for the original idea of Donut.c, and a huge shout out to Julius for his one-liner Python implementation of said Donut.c. Without these two, this project wouldn't have been possible. If you want to see my code, it is here on GitHub, available down below in the description, or at github.com slash evanjodev slash donut pi. You know, if you think about it hard enough, it really could have been bagel.c, and this whole project would have been bagel.py. What a nice shower thought.